Time to learn more about this lake straight from an expert fishing guide on Discover Wisconsin. The lake, the reason for it all. Fed by the Chippewa River, the Chippewa flowage covers 15,000 acres and came into existence in 1923. I'm going to see John, who's a fishing guide, who will tell me about the lake's indigenous history. When I'm driving to my next fishing spot, I'm thinking about the people that lived here before the flood. In some cases, I might be driving over their house or their farm or over the old roadbed. There's a lot beneath the surface that tells a tale of the people that were here. There's seven bands of the Ojibwa nation. Our band is the Lakoudere tribe of the Ojibwe. Originally, they came from the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and they worked their way up through the Great Lakes, settled on Madeline Island on La Pointe, and then they allied themselves with the Mate, which would be French Canadian, Indian mixed blood. They eventually started penetrating into northern Wisconsin and exploring. That goes back to probably mid to late 1700s. At that time, a number of villages sprang up, lumberjacks or traders or trappers, all races of people, all nationalities, I should say, married into the Ojibwa tribe, and they all shared their own cultures, recipes, and crafts. They all worked together and all lived as one. You know, the only way you could survive is if you worked together. Give me the background and the history of Indian Trails Resort. I love the bar we're standing in right now. The original building that was here was built in the 1870s, most likely, as an Indian homestead cabin. And the entire cabin is still fully intact, all four walls of the cabin. One wall that's partially exposed and visible. Probably the last surviving residence of the old village of Pukwayawang. This was built in the war right after the guys came back from the service. And it's all stone walls and logs and it's beautifully done. We try to preserve the flavor of the old family fishing resorts of the 40s and 50s. It's like a time machine. When I started as a teenager, I hired a lot of guides myself. A buddy of mine and I would hire out a guide and it was a great learning experience, especially at that time when there was so much to learn when I was just starting out. We learned so much we realized we have to do this every year. It's actually more important to learn tips from a guide than it is to catch fish with a guide. So the guides that we have are very professional, very knowledgeable. Some guides specialize in muskies, others specialize in walleye or panfish. Some of them are multifaceted and they fish for everything. So it depends on what you're looking for. It often becomes an annual thing. They realize how much there is to learn, how enjoyable it is. And you get all the stories from the guides too. The full fish stories, things like that, right? Actually, our fish are so big here that you don't need to exaggerate them, so it's, uh, All right. we're lucky to have what we have here. There are so many fish in these waters, not to mention all the floating bogs that drift from place to place, to the dozens of islands, to the array of wildlife that cover these lands. <laughs> 